up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we are here with Boz of Capstan. Great to be able to talk with you today, man. Thank you for being here. Dude, thanks for having me, man. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm very excited because we got a new album coming out this July, Separate, and uh, I'm very excited. Uh, I don't know if uh, you were told, but uh, the last album, Restless Heart Keep Running, was an album that really was in the top for 2019 for me, so it's great to be able to get another fix. Could the first single that you released, Shades of Us, serve as maybe like a good representation of what the entirety of Separate's going to sound like, or is that just one taste, the tip of the iceberg? that's uh that's honestly one that we've talked about a lot and it's a tough question to answer um the thing about separate is we felt like this was a record we approached as a whole where we wanted to do really we, we really wanted to have a focus on like singles and you know and bangers and like restless heart keep running and a lot of our stuff before really takes you on a journey and separate from top to bottom we just think every song could potentially be like you know, music video worthy, like single worthy. And, uh, you know, Shades of Us specifically, we felt like it fell in a good zone um, where it just, it, it's, it's heavy, it hit, it's people hard, um, but it also doesn't take people, you know, I'll give you a little hint, I guess we, we, we step out of our comfort zone a little bit on this upcoming record and we didn't want to hit people with some of those songs right away. Mm -hmm. So th that, that was more of like a song that we just thought it was infectious great hook, great feel, easy to sing along to. And it just, it just, I mean, shades of us too. It, it really felt like the flagship song of the record. Wait, you mean to tell me that Capstan has a comfort zone because restless heart keeps running. I mean, you have songs like abstracted. That's very different from like, you know, uh, terminal, which is very different from a song like stars before the sun. And then different from hideaway. It almost seems like uh, experimentation and taking a new approach is almost just part of the Capstan sound in general. Yeah, it, it is actually, and I like when people recognize that. Um, so those that do won't be surprised by some of the stuff that they hear. Like maybe even the next single uh, that we drop, it, it's going to throw some people through a loop, I, I think, and more so than any of that other stuff has. But we're just at a point where we want to write great music. Um, we don't want to be labeled. We We really have a hard time labeling ourselves like what we are um you know rock <laughs> i think it's like the easiest thing we want to be falling into in every different way so uh if you liked restless heart because of that type of journey of like musicianship and genre that it takes you on uh you'll love this record but i just think there's more times to sing along on this record there's there's heavier hitting courses heavier hitting hooks um and obviously still you know all the capstan that people love which is excellent because I think you have the best of both worlds where you could, you know, experiment as much as possible, but you're not all over the place. And you could also have a sound that defines you without being repetitive. So I think you kind of avoided both of those pitfalls. And what does it ever start off with a preconceived idea? Like, do you ever enter the studio or the songwriting process with being like, OK, we want it to sound like this? Or is there like a lot of like rolling the dice and a lot of trial and error involved? Well, that's uh, so. <clears throat> you know, quarantine happened and we had more time than ever to put a record together. Like we basically quarantined together. Um, the band lives amongst three different houses. And so everyone that we saw in those three houses, that was the, those were the only people we were seeing during that whole time. So this record, unlike any other record, we really were able to focus on what type of songs we were creating, not just kind of like an idea uh, lending itself to, you know, some lyrics, lending itself to a chorus, and then boom, you have a song. Um, we actually, like, took a major step back as a band, and we were like, you know, what really are we? Uh, what really are we trying to accomplish? Where are we trying to go? And I can say, um, you know, now, officially, you know, Separate has, uh, or Separate, um, at, we, we left that open-ended. It, it technically works both ways, Separate or Separate. Um we have 10 songs on that record, but we actually wrote about 24 uh, for the record, which is unlike anything we've ever done. Um, of those 14 other ideas, more than half of them had full lyrics, full everything, but we had like bones of like 14 other songs that we scrapped. And we've never been a band like that. We've never been able to have the time, um, the energy to dedicate ourselves to like, is this good enough? is this the right step? And, um, 
you know, in the direction we want to take. And I just think that what we can't like looking back now, even already, I think quarantine was the best thing to ever happen to Capstan uh, in our trajectory and what we're trying to do moving forward. So to answer your question, this was the most meticulous we ever like honed in on. This is what we want to accomplish with this, this song. This is what we want to accomplish with this song. And like, I mean, even for me, like some of my favorite personal songs didn't make the record. Um, but that's not because the other songs aren't incredible. It's just because of the vision that we had collectively. Uh, and, and, you know, I think the whole matters the most, uh, than just your own personal preferences. And, you know, maybe before it was just like, Oh, Scott really liked this song. So it's going on the record yeah. or, you know, Oh, Joe really liked this song. So, Oh, you know, but now it was like, what are the collective 10 best pieces of work we had? You ever worry that the songs you left out are going to be a B side and just be the biggest hit you guys ever had? <laughs> well, some of my favorite bands, B sides are their biggest songs. And uh, one thing we did talk about nowadays with everybody dropping B side stuff is like, there's a very good chance that some of those songs will still be, you know, maybe a couple might see the light of day. Mm, uh, and I don't know what capacity will do that, but we've never had a chance, you know, to do a ton of B sides. So that with this record is more possible than ever. Yeah. And it, and you mentioned quor- like quarantine. Yeah, you're right. Like you're right. Like I know that there were a lot of artists who used, you know, this isolation and this uncertainty as a means of creativity. Isolation is a great fuel for creativity. So I, I feel like I always respect artists who are able to use these difficult times to their advantage in a way. And I'd imagine you learned new things uh, about each other as a band, but maybe you've also <clears throat> learned some new technical stuff as well right stuff that you may have never learned unless if this happened yeah 100 percent. it it's like when everything happened and you didn't know what covid was going to bring like oh this will last a week this will last a month and then you started to realize that like this is going to go on for a long time it was very easy to get frustrated um you know we've already dedicated our entire young adult lives to capstan i pretty much dedicated my whole life like to music, um, besides going to college, which I only did for my parents, you know, and then I moved from Michigan to Orlando to basically start Capstan and to be just kind of told, Hey, put your whole life on hold again. When this type of industry takes so long, it takes so much wherewithal to push through like the way you have to adjust your life to make like a, an original style music band in this vein of music, like grow organically. Like it's, it takes 10, 10 times more than I ever thought it would be when I had these dreams as a kid. And people think like, Oh, bands get big overnight. Well, like they just didn't see the months and years that went into it before the one thing finally helped them explode. So quarantine sucked when it first began. Cause you just, you feel, you're feeling shitty about yourself. You hate delaying what has already been delayed for so long, but you fast forward, you start growing with the process, you start learning. And maybe this was really good for us. Yeah. And for a band like us, it really, really is meticulous in our song creation. Like it, it was like maybe the best thing, like I said, that like we ever could have gone through for the longevity for the next steps of Capstan. And we're going to enter a great era of music and you guys have plenty of songs underneath your belt and you're pretty fully equipped uh, to hit the ground running when live shows start again. And did you, uh, when, and, and with the Capstan interview last year, I heard that there was the Capstan house. Uh, do you think maybe, uh, when, can you, can you, uh, sort of, uh, bring that back and make it the ultimate party zone for when shows return again? Maybe you could make that Capstan. Oh, oh man. The Capstan House was the most glorious, um, really just unexpected thing that I think I was like ever a part of with, um, you know, because I did a bunch of booking, a bunch of promoting and stuff for, you know, about 10 years there. Um, from like the time I was like 15 or 16 till I was like 25. And the last, you know, couple years of that was the Capstan House when I moved to Orlando. It was basically like uh, an Orlando music frat house. Uh, the whole the whole band lived there, and we ended up being able to throw these shows because of where the house was huge. It was a five bedroom, um, two and a half bathroom, and we were at the end of a cul de sac. And like our neighbor, the very few neighbors we had were so cool about the noise and stuff. And like we threw probably 
like of, of actual real shows. We probably threw like 10 to 15 and I'm talking like 150 people in my living room. Um, and it was like the coolest time to be growing a band because that really cemented us in the local Orlando scene. Like we had some majorly big bands play there way before their time. Uh, bands that we were already friends with or became friends with, like, you know, not not to, not, not to drop names or anything, but like Knuckle Puck, Real Friends, um, They're great. in her own words, was there. The Swellers played there. Um, old hardcore bands like Meridian. Um, like, there, it like... I, it's hard to even say off the top of my head what, you know, all the bands that played there, but what that time meant because it like, it gave us the ability to kind of just throw our own shows and say, fuck the local local scene. If we weren't able to get on said show, even though Orlando is a great local scene, uh, we just made our own way. Really? And that was like party city. So much fun. And we never got in trouble. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God. I don't think that shit would fly in New York city. I mean, you got to find like an, a vacant storefront and just, like, uh, they, we're trying to make, like, a device where, like, uh, you know, the windows pull and it just looks like the stores close. And then underneath that, it's... <laughs> I it, love that. Yeah, it's a show, but it's pretty <laughs> hectic. But that's pretty awesome that you were able to, you know, kind of make a scene within a scene, in a way. And, uh, and Exactly. And you mentioned Knuckle Puck, too. Their last album was so much fun to listen to. So, uh, shout out to oh, them. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, great friends of ours from the Midwest. So to have like bands like that and see what they've been able to do, you know, it's just cool. Like to have known that we were somewhat a part of that, not only friendship, but their journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. And kind of like going back to your overall songwriting, because like, you know, you mentioned that you were trying some new things and all this, but it's fair to say that with this album separate or separate, because now I have a bit of a mind fuck now, but, um, <laughs> but uh, do you like, do you, this is almost kind of like a standout in the Capstan catalog, right? Like, is are people going to notice something very different from Russell's Heart Keep Running and so on and so forth? Um, I think the really meticulous Capstan listener is going to, it might, I'm just trying to think of the best way to put it. Anyone that has heard Capstan before should love this record. Um, but they might recognize the fact that we really tried, and I don't think this is a bad thing either, but just tr we tried to make parts, every part of the song, not just choruses, more infectious. Um, we went and worked in um, just outside of Austin, Texas with uh, Machine, um, legendary producer and engineer. It was a hell of a process. Like he's done some of your favorite pop records, but also some of your favorite heavy metal records. And we felt like that was such like a big, that's such a big thing of what Capstan is, you know, across the spectrum. And he preached to us, you know, as we were going into pre-pro and tweaking things here and there, like, if you can't do this to every part of every song, you know, it, no matter through the tech, no matter through what it is, if people can't feel that beat if they can't feel what's happening throughout the whole thing it's like they're gonna have a hard time staying with it and we're always gonna have that progressive side of capstan but i think we really found the formula the balance of like oh my god like this song could almost be on rock radio but it's also still very much what capstan is and then obviously experimenting with like a little bit of different genre play some people were like oh shit, shades of us sounds like metalcore capstan you know slightly which we haven't done a whole lot of, but it's still Capstan. And the next song you're going to hear is going to do a little bit more in a different way. And so, yeah, the, the, the real Capstan listeners, I don't think disappointed is the word, but some might just be like, oh, this is a little different. But I think for the masses, people are going to be like, damn, like this is good. And that's what we want more than anything. Well, I've noticed that like a lot of bands have demonstrated evolution one way or another. I've noticed that with a lot, like look at Under Oath. I mean, like, you know, I grew up with listening to Reinventing Your Exit and then, you know, to have the, their latest album come out from 2018, like that was a big drastic change. And then you see how bands like Crown the Empire have evolved. You've seen how bands like, uh, um, Dance Gavin Dance. I mean, I remember when Dance Gavin Dance was opening for Upon a Burning Body, like, mm -hmm like right i love that yeah i know it, it is interesting interesting to see like there's so many bands that have gotten huge like huge huge like bring me the horizon and stuff like that and like they were like grindcore you know what i mean 
like Parkway Drive is one of the biggest bands in the world in like the heavy, like at least, I don't know, heavy rock oh, uh, wave of music. Yeah. And like some of those old records, like you kind of have to adapt and, and evolve or die, you know? And I don't think that always necessarily includes selling out. You just become more self-aware. You become more interested in longevity yeah. like that's that's cool well there's something to be said about a band sticking with their guns like you know i don't want cannibal corpse to change anytime soon i don't want them writing any, <laughs> yes yeah i don't want them writing any gentle ballads anytime soon but like uh you know I, I think really it's up to the band well as long as if evolution is enforced that's really because that is even even like the most novice music listener could probably notice when evolution is forced or not and absolutely yeah so like there's times i'm not going to mention bands but maybe some people could get ideas where like um a band makes a drastic change it's not organic at all it's a complete throw out of left field they didn't see it coming and you know if, the, if that's what the band ultimately wanted to do good on them but there is a difference between forced evolution and uh, organic evolution what i see with capstan in general i mean again going from restless heart keep running every song i felt like played by its own rules but at the same time there was always something that sort of tied it together so everything sort of felt like it belonged there and i'm talking from an open door all the way to the final track the love that remains so thank you man we feel like that we learned a hell of a lot doing restless heart and we there is evolution taking place but we feel like what we did is going to be welcomed we think people are really going to enjoy what we did not forced in the least bit so we're excited i can't wait to release like i mean it's hard it's so hard to just release one at a time because like once again we put so much of a focus i guess as we always do but i just want people to hear all of them and like the collective work as a whole is our favorite by far and i'm and again i'm very excited to see uh what it does and uh please just bring back the capstan house that that has to be like something you bring back like someday we got to make that happen. i would love i would love to i think the main issue right now is that some of us are going through buying houses uh and they're not exactly like you know they're not big like starter homes stuff like that and uh my friends are doing amazing all things considered and with covid and stuff and their loved ones so <laughs> and from my perspective hey you know give me a living room i'll do it let's go all right we, 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 it'll happen. It'll happen. I, I just not one day. Just ask. No, go go to some random person's house. Give them some bucks. Be like, here, take a vacation for a weekend. It's on us. All expenses. Yeah, and, we're just gonna be hanging. Yeah, you know, maybe a few friends. Yeah, yeah. I, ignore any broken furniture. Like, like, here's some money. Take a vacation. Any furniture that's fragile, bring it with you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I'd and I'd imagine because like. You could also play with a uh, in front of like a diverse audience and play with different uh, different <clears throat> bands as well. Like I could, I could easily see you play with a with a band like Knocked Loose or Code Orange, but then I could also see you do a tour with a band like Knuckle Puck or Taking Back Sunday or uh, you know Red Jumpsuit Apparatus or something like that. So I, it's fair to say that you've noticed a lot of diversity in your crowds as well, right? Yeah, that that's huge. Absolutely. Like we toured, you know, before COVID hit. Like we were you know, the last couple of tours was like Silverstein and, you know, in Hawthorne Heights. And then like, obviously we went on tour with Bayside and then we were able to go with like some of our great friends and new kind of pop wave, uh, uh, set it off. Oh, they're awesome. You know, we, I interviewed them. They're yeah, great. And they're like, they're an incredible band. And like we've toured with as it is, you know, on that, that end of the spectrum and like overseas with tr like trash boat and doll skin and like, just very you know very different styles of music and we almost can tailor our set at this point to like what we're what we're playing with like you know the wreath the wreath and the follower may not make it when we're playing a heavier show <laughs> you know just like live bait may not be a song we play when we're with set it off so we really actually embrace that we love to be able to cross over a little bit and we hope that that helps us just grow even even you know further into the veins of what people listen to yeah i, I it's i call it the fearless charm because it almost seems like every band on fearless records has that uh that uh capability as well that i agree man and the, the whole fearless situation for us has been incredible like they they have just really impressed the hell out of me with how much they just want capstan to be capstan they never tried to put us in a box 
Uh, they never tried to make us change or like adhere to any set of rules. And like, I don't know, like, I feel like that's what makes really incredible, unique musicians, what they are. Like, you can't try to like, if you believe in a band and you want to sign them for that, then believe in them, not what they can potentially be. Like people know that we've always not been exactly, you know, in one box and fearless was the one by far that stuck, stuck out. That was like, we want you to be capstan. And we're like, it's, it's just proven time and time again of how much they believe in that. And that's like, what an incredible family to be a part of, you know? Yeah. Great people too. They're great to this channel as well. So huge shout out to fearless records. Yeah. Shout out to, shout out to our whole team and everybody that works there, you know, fearless records, man, they've been holding it down for over a decade now easily. Yep. They, they are responsible for some of my favorite albums that came out when I was in high school. So me too, man. Hey, maybe separate. will uh, will be be you know the listeners one of the f the few that they really maybe it'll stand the test of time maybe not i can get excited about listen it. i still jam the bless the fall album that came out on fearless back in the day i still jam you know all of my well they weren't on fearless at the time but they're on fearless now but i still jam all that remains i still jam you know all of the albums that have come out on fearless so there's so many like it's just countless even like the of the newer bands and stuff like that have put out records like some of my absolute favorite you know across the board in any style of music that fearless has like it's crazy they're so good at diversifying like it's awesome so yeah just to be on that roster alone like still doesn't you know even over a year of being there it still doesn't click yet it's like damn yeah, they're great. And and going back to what you said too, you're right. Like to to like the radio friendly crowd, your least heavy song, you guys are like emperor to them. And to the metal crowd, like your heaviest song is like you guys are share. So in the end, you just got to go with your gut instinct. Exactly. I love that. Yep. And I just wanted to ask a uh, one specific question uh, for you, being a bassist as well. Uh, just because I, I love talking with uh, bass players about like you know their instrumentation and how it works. And I mean. It's rock and roll. We've all heard our fair share of bass player jokes. I've heard, right? Oh, I love them. Bring them on. <laughs> but um, people don't understand. Like, bass is so important as it has both an emphasis on rhythm and melody at the same time. It really is sort of like the super glue for the song. Do you find it easier to come up with bass parts when you are um, when when there's music already presented to you and there's already a structure, or do you sometimes have a whole bass pattern written down and maybe the band could write over that? that's a really good question um so i'm not gonna lie like over the uh, evolution of capstan you know since the band started until now um we our roles have like always been in flux like what we do and how capstan creates songs is i think super unique like i don't know many bands where like five people play a role in like the creation of every song like from the writing to the lyrics to the vocab used in the lyrics, to the musicianship top to bottom, um, to the fact that we have three people in the band that sing, like stack melodies, like we just, it's like a real group effort um, that like, I, I was always like a, you know, in my bands growing up, I was always like one of the main songwriters. Like I played guitar and bass and like, uh, it was always like that was like my role and now like Joe and Scott are like our lead songwriters like Joe our, our lead guitarist is just like he, he's a virtuoso like I the way his brain works the way he is with music theory um, his strategies like I mean it's it, it's ridiculous like I, I could go on for days like he, he absolutely blows my songwriting ability out of the water <clears throat> so you ha I've had to adapt over time you know and being a bassist like Joe does things as a songwriter that I can't, I just simply can't do. And so I'll, I'll work in tandem with Joe and, and there's plenty of times that Joe brings to the table, you know, Hey, this is what needs to be played over this part that I'm doing like this because of what I'm playing, because of what the guitars are doing. And like, I just, I trust him. We all trust each other. And he, Joe, like literally writes, he, he will literally write every piece of music if allow, if we allow him to, from vocals down all the way to drums and obviously scott takes it and runs with it uh harry comes up with riffs and parts i'll add my flair to bass but like the way the band has evolved like joe is just so incredibly in tune with his vi with with our vision and the way he sees the evolution of capstan it's like 
we're so lucky and benefit so much from a guy that just he knows more than music like not even just playing guitar and like a rock band he knows more about music than anybody i've ever met so He's as a bassist nerd. i've really learned like how important it is that you have to also fill your role yeah and you also have to really fit in and capstan's a band that like there's a lot happening you know at, at a lot of times and so when I used to be like kind of a lead bassist and write a lot of funky and cool stuff, now it's all about what's appropriate. It's all about what fits. And I also really like having a focus on singing as well. You know, I don't have to focus so much on playing lead bass with the guys I have, like with this band, like um, bass can almost sit back a little bit. And there's always gonna be those bass lines people re remember and stuff like Wax Poetic, you know, super memorable bass line, like, really jammy and you'll hear some more on this record too so uh maybe in the next song even hell yeah hell yeah i'm excited it, i love hearing how like you have different songwriting processes and every member brings in their own contributions to it it almost seems like the way that it starts could almost to help organically form the outcome of the overall track if somebody were to maybe yeah. get to know all the entire every member of the band perfectly like know everything about you guys and then listen to the album they'd be able to tell how each song sort of started off i think so too i really do like that's how the songs go um just from influence alone like joe and scott were heavily influenced their whole lives by like technical styles of music you know progressive styles of music from you know really heavy death metal to like some like joe like loves like intricate jazz you know, and I think parts of that comes out in our music. And then, like, me, Harry's kind of a crossover. And then, like, me and Anthony, like, are like grew up more on, like, the the punk rock spectrum. Like, the pop punk, the, the alternative rock, like, spectrum. And, like, we're, like, this amalgam of all of that. Where there's some things that Joe does and I go, man, I don't know if I can even wrap my head around that. I don't even know if I like it, you know? And then my love of music in general takes over and it like i feel like some of the best records you ever hear you have to listen to it a little bit and it takes time some of the my favorite records i hated them the first time i listened to them the same kind of goes when we're writing songs like some of my favorite songs you listen to and you're like i don't know if i like them. because it's just just because it's not what i want doesn't mean that it makes sense for the whole band but that has helped me grow so much as a musician and vice versa the ideas like shit joe would be nothing without our melody baby um <laughs> no not gonna lie joe's incredible joe's incredible at melody too but i gotta take something for myself okay fair enough so uh, before we go i want to thank you so much for your time and for such a great discussion uh, is there just uh, anything else that you would like to promote uh with the release of separate or separate whoever uh whatever people decide i love that man no thank you so much for having me this is awesome we're super excited once again um separate or separate comes out on july 23rd via fearless we're gonna have a lot of stuff happening all summer long so keep your eyes peeled um you know subscribe to fearless and capstan's youtube pages and follow us on all of our socials we're really trying to grow there uh let's be friends we're just super down to earth we're like nothing crazy all we want to do is befriend people that love our style of music and hopefully we create you know some type of great community and space together and keep growing on the one we already have so um thanks for having me man i cannot wait to come back when the album's fully fully released and we can talk about everything more openly and get your ass to new york city when shows happen again yes um we don't know for sure right now but you know before the end of the year i think that's a definite awesome well thank you so much Fingers everybody problem. Capstan, be sure to check out Separate or Separate, however you prefer to call it, <laughs> coming out via Fearless Records, July 23rd. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time.